and uh, this is the Cradle Rock Strat. I'm known as a guitar collector a little bit. This is the guitar I've had the longest. I bought this in 1994 at the Fall Philadelphia Guitar Show from a guy named Ryland. I think I paid $2,800 for it, which was a lot of money back in 94. I've held it onto it my, my whole life, and when I did a cover of Rory Gallagher's Cradle Rock, I used it on uh, my first solo album. I did all this myself. It was mint when I got it. I had a studded belt in the early 2000s that I thought looked cool, which was a terrible idea, because then that's what happens. That's what happens when children play with expensive things. Uh, these are the uh, Joe Bonamassa pickups. The thing about Joe is he'll find an old guitar, and then he'll He'll want to make a set to match that kind of guitar that he likes, you know, because there's something about that tone, you know. But he's just such a, a great player, and he's, he's a great guitar hero. We did a, a set of pickups uh, for the Bonnie guitar, which is a, a, a 1955, which is completely different than a 1963. 55s are a little brighter, have a lot more air on top. 63s are like a powered strat, you know. I mean, like most notably, there's it's gone back and forth, but Stevie Ray's number one was a 63. And there's something to them. They are really powerful pickups. We decided to recreate the very specific resistance on, on these that make it a very powerful sounding guitar. <laughs> If you're a Strat guy, you'll like you'll like this version because if you got a green box and a Fender amp and want to play Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of stuff, you'll like these pickups. Or an 805, a Seymour Duncan 805. Okay. All right, cut the how, check. How dare I? <laughs> how dare I? We've already gone through and measured all the specifications of the pickups, the uh, DC resistance and the inductance, the resonant frequency, gauss strength, Q of the coil, right, and yeah. uh, all that. Seymour and I were just talking. I had noticed on the neck pickup that the my gauss strength was noticeably lower than the middle and the bridge consistently. And so maybe it was like an alnical four magnet, but Seymour was saying that, uh, you know, in England, they, they have big transformers on the trains. And if you set your guitar next to it, it can easily demagnetize the pickups. Yeah. Or, or leaning against your amplifier. If yeah, you lean it against on the side where the power transformer is, it would demagnetize it. A lot of time guys put their amps in the back of their car in the trunk, then they put their guitar case on top of it, you know, and if this is near that uh, speaker. speaker, man. It's going <laughs> to mess it up, you know. Yeah, this one's just kind of gently demagnetized. It's probably actually good for the neck pickup because yeah, a, a lot of these smooth. strats had, you know, they had so much string pull on the right. bass side that. Yeah, you get that wobble as you would go up the neck. You can sort of hear it. It's like a wobbling effect. You, you get like a couple dissonant notes. What yeah, happened it's in that? Magnetism is pulling the yeah. string out of tune a yeah. little bit. And that's why we uh, did the RWRP for the Strats. We made these were like probably back here. These are I think south. They're still. all south. South. Yeah. And then south, and then we would have made this north with the reverse winding on it. And that way, these two are like they're quiet when they're in the two and in four the, position. That's a three position switch on there. Yeah, there yeah no, yeah. there's no two and four unless you just yeah, it's a notch switch it in between. So we'll usually run through a few rounds of prototypes here and compare the specs on what we prototype to what we measured on the guitar and make some adjustments. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky because we find on a lot of these old instruments, there's a certain combination of parameters that we measure that can be hard to duplicate with the materials that we commonly use. When we think we're close, then we start sending them to uh, Rick and to Joe and those guys will do their listening tests and give us some feedback and it's usually some back and forth, you know, uh, get the feedback, we make some adjustments, send another set. And, uh, in the case of these, I think we, we didn't go back and forth too many times. Again, it's all about how they sound. You just really intently listen to it. My first reaction was like, like I mean, they're pretty spot on. Certain guitars stick around and the, the good ones are, are the good ones. So that's why, that's why we, we, we chose this guitar. This is a special guitar to me that particularly sounds good. So I think the people who buy these pickups will put them in their Stratocast and be like, oh, okay, I think we're improving the sound of the instrument, which is cool. Mm -hmm. 